Now, we have this late word. Uh, this bulletin, President Kennedy is dead. The President of the United States was shot down by an assassin's bullet as he rode through downtown Dallas, Texas in an open automobile today. The shooting of the president occurred while President Kennedy and his wife, who were visiting Dallas on a campaign tour, were parading in a limousine from the airport through the city with Texas Governor John Connolly and his wife. On November 21, 1963, Air Force One, carrying President and Mrs. Kennedy, departed from Andrews Air Force Base. President Kennedy was scheduled to campaign in Texas. The purpose of the visit was to launch his campaign for re-election in the following November 1964 presidential race, and to help raise more Democratic Party presidential campaign fund contributions. The tour was to leave the White House on Thursday, November 21st, for San Antonio on Air Force One, followed by visits to Houston and Fort Worth. He was then scheduled to leave Fort Worth for Dallas the next morning, Friday, November 22nd and then visit Austin before spending the weekend with Vice President and Mrs. Johnson. On November 21, President Kennedy made a speech in San Antonio, his first stop, before heading to Houston. In Houston, he attended a dinner at the Rice Hotel and a dinner honoring Congressman Albert Thomas at the Sam Houston Coliseum. President Kennedy then traveled to Fort Worth and arrived at the Hotel Texas, where he was staying. The next day, after finishing his speech at the breakfast, Kennedy departed for Dallas. The presidential delegation, which included Kennedy and his wife Jacqueline, arrived at Dallas Love Field Airport at 11.38 a.m. After being welcomed with enthusiasm by the public, the president and his wife boarded a limousine with Governor John Connolly and his wife, and at 11.55 a.m., the motorcade carrying them departed from Love Field Airport. The president's limousine was not equipped with a bulletproof bubble-top roof and was completely open. The city parade was planned from Love Field Airport through the city of Dallas, going through downtown, including Dealey Plaza, to the trademark where the luncheon and presidential address were scheduled to take place. The route was finalized on November 18, and the timetable was announced the next day, including the president's scheduled arrival at the trademark around 12.30 p.m. Security measures for the presidential car as it drives through crowded city streets require balancing two incompatible challenges, escorting the president and showing scenes of the president interacting with the public. Unless a clear bulletproof glass roof, called a bubble top, is installed, it is difficult to get the president in the car safely through the crowd. When planning a parade route, it is also necessary to choose a street with no high windows where snipers can stick their guns out and to decide on an alternate route in case of an emergency. It is also important to choose main streets, where the motorcade can be kept as far away from the crowds as possible, and to avoid curves as much as possible, especially sharp turns. This is because the speed of the limousine has to be slowed down considerably in order to make the turn, and there is a danger of targeting the president in the car. In Dallas, however, there was a situation that went against these principles of security. First, the 16-kilometer route from Love Field Airport to the Trademart, the luncheon venue, had tens of thousands of windows facing the street. And the limousine carrying the president had to slow down considerably every time it came around a curve in Dallas. Even the turn at the intersection of Main and Houston streets on the city parade route requires considerable braking, and the curve from Houston Street into Elm Street requires slowing down to only a few kilometers per hour. That is about the pace at which a person would walk quickly, making it easier for a sniper looking through a high-power telephoto site to aim at the president. At such times, the Secret Service is trained to stand on the steps on either side of the presidential limousine, placing themselves between the crowd and the car and acting as human shields. Kennedy, however, did not like his guards to ride on the steps of the limousine. They would block his view and make it difficult for him to see himself clearly in the crowd. This often forced the Secret Service to ride on the steps of the following car. Similarly, the installation of a bulletproof bubble-top roof on the limousine would have obscured the president from the crowd. 
As a result, the president's limousine was paraded through the city of Dallas with the roof completely open. From the time the parade route was determined and the information was made public, it was possible to plan the exact location and time to target President Kennedy. At 12.24 p.m., the motorcade carrying the president and his entourage passed the intersection of Main and Field Streets, and by 12.28 p.m., they were approaching Daly Plaza. At 12.29 p.m., the motorcade made a 90-degree right turn onto Houston Street. The motorcade was scheduled to arrive in about five minutes at the trademark, where the luncheon was to be held and Kennedy's speech was to take place. At 12.30 p.m., the limousine turned left onto Houston Street and entered Elm Street. At that moment, the limousine in which the president was riding was shot. The gunshots were reportedly heard from the direction of the Texas School Book Depository. One shot missed the limousine, but two hit Kennedy's body. The bullet that pierced Kennedy's throat struck Governor Connolly in the back. The next bullet shot through Kennedy's skull, penetrating his brain and exiting the front of his skull. Clint Hill, the security officer, immediately jumped off the steps of the following vehicle and attempted to jump onto the rear steps of the limousine. Five minutes after the shooting, the limousine arrived at Parkland Memorial Hospital, where President Kennedy and Governor Connolly were treated. President Kennedy, however, was seriously wounded and pronounced dead at 1 p.m. Half an hour later, the president's death was officially announced. The news that the president had been shot had already been widely reported. Police were already looking for a suspect. Based on the direction of the gunshots, the Texas School Book Depository was searched, and one rifle and bullet casings were found on the sixth floor. Police immediately inspected the building's employees, but one employee was not in the building. According to eyewitnesses, the suspect was described as a white male, about 30, slender build, 5 feet 10 inches tall, 165 pounds. About an hour after the shooting, at about 1.50 p.m., Lee Harvey Oswald, an employee of the Texas School Book Depository, was arrested as a suspect in the case. Oswald left the Texas School Book Depository after the shooting and boarded a bus. However, because the bus was stuck in traffic due to the incident, he got off the bus and took a cab to the area of his rooming house. Returning to his rooming house, he went outside again with his gun. At 1.15 p.m., when Dallas police officer, Tippett, who saw Oswald matching the suspect's description, got out of his patrol car and tried to question him, Oswald shot and killed the officer. Hearing police sirens, Oswald ran toward the Texas theater and fled there. Oswald rushed into the movie theater without buying a ticket, and Julia Postal, who was in charge of the ticket booth, called the police to report the presence of a suspicious man. Police cars arrived at the theater, and Oswald was arrested at 1.50 p.m. Lee Harvey Oswald was a former U.S. Marine Corps member who defected to the Soviet Union in 1959 after his discharge, but returned to the U.S. in 1962. In March 1963, he purchased a Carcano carbine rifle under the fake name A. Heidel, and it is alleged that this rifle was used to shoot President Kennedy. Oswald also reportedly went to Mexico in September of that year and visited the Soviet Union and Cuban consulates. The following October, he left Mexico City and arrived in Dallas, where he was hired by the Texas School Book Depository. Oswald was arrested and charged with the murder of Officer Tippett and President Kennedy on the evening of the 22nd, and a press conference was held at Dallas Police Department headquarters on the 23rd. He denied any involvement in the assassination of President Kennedy, claiming in front of the press that he had been set up and was a patsy. The next day, November 24, Oswald was scheduled to be transferred from the underground parking garage of the Dallas Police Department headquarters to the county jail. The scene was broadcast live on television throughout the United States. At 11.21 a.m., Oswald was shot by Jack Ruby, a local nightclub owner, in the underpass of the Dallas Police Department headquarters. Oswald, who was unconscious, was transported to Parkland Memorial Hospital, where he was pronounced dead at 1.07 p.m. An hour after President Kennedy was pronounced dead, his body was transported to the airport and his casket was brought aboard Air Force One. 
On board Air Force One, which carried Kennedy's body to Washington, Vice President Lyndon Johnson was sworn in as president. Upon arrival at Andrew Air Force Base near Washington, D.C., Kennedy's body was transferred to Bethesda Naval Hospital. An autopsy performed there confirmed that one of the bullets exited the president's back and exited his neck, and the other passed through the back of his head and exited the right side of his head. After an autopsy at Bethesda Naval Hospital, Kennedy's body was returned to the White House. A state funeral was held on November 25th, and he was buried in Arlington Cemetery. Nine months after the incident, on September 27, 1964, the Warren Commission's report on the case was released. The Warren Commission concluded that Lee Harvey Oswald acted alone and found no evidence of any individual, group, or state conspiracy. However, various questions have been raised about the Warren Report, the official government opinion, and many people and researchers have been trying to solve the mystery of the assassination, and have developed various hypotheses about the true circumstances of the incident. There are suspicions that Oswald acted alone, as well as conspiracy theories that he may have had collaborators and that it was a multiple assassination. However, the truth remained a mystery, as classified documents related to this incident were withheld by the government until 2039 in order to protect innocent people connected with this incident from harm. In 1992, the President John F. Kennedy Assassination Records Collection Act of 1992 was passed, a law requiring the full release of classified assassination-related documents within 25 years. This law greatly shortened the time limit for non-disclosure of classified documents and made classified materials available to the public in phases. On December 15, 2022, more than 13,000 new classified documents were released, and the White House announced that more than 97% of the records in its archives had been released. However, some of the documents are to remain private until June 2023 to avoid certain harm. Although the newly released documents are not expected to uncover any major new facts, it is nevertheless hoped that they will provide more information and a better understanding of the case.